Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, uh, today we will uh, present about turbo charger. So, before before uh, our team present, let's uh, our team introduce uh, ourselves. So, uh, my name is Muhammad Shafiq bin Muhammad Kirul Azmi. My name is Muhammad Fahmi Khalili bin Saiful Azmi. My name is Nurul Fatiha Ashikin binti Muhammad Shukri. And I am Nur Azizi binti Shukur. Okay, so now my team already explain, uh, introduced ourselves. So uh, now we will uh, go to introduction. So we will be present by Mr. Fami first. All right, so I'm going to explain about the introduction. All right, uh, sorry. So I'm going to explain about the introduction. Uh, a turbo charger is a turbine driven force induction device that increase an internal combustion engine's efficiency and power output by forcing extra air into the combustion chamber. In other words, it uses the waste energy from exhaust gas to increase the charge mass of air and power of the engine. So simply put, Turbocharger is an external power that uses the exhaust output into the engine to produce even more power without wasting more fuel. Okay, uh, next. So why turbocharger is used? Uh, this leads to more air intakes for each intake stroke in the cylinder. This energy is extracted from the kinetical energy of the exhaustive gases of the engine to spin the centrifugal compressor. A turbo power can also be used without increasing power to improve fuel efficiency. Turbo chargers are widely used in car and commercial vehicle because they allow smaller capacity engine to have improved fuel economy, reduce emission, high power and considerably higher torque. Nowadays, most vehicles are big in size which are more heavier. The heavier the vehicles the more power needed to for the engine. Thus, it will be costly. In order to cut the budget, turbo is one of the options as it has a lot of advantages such as fuel efficiency, less cost and easy to maintain. So, okay, that's for all for me. I'm going to pass to the other presenter. There are three components in turbo charger. The first one is a turbine, which is almost always a radial inflow turbine. The second one is a compressor, which is almost always a centrifugal compressor. And the third one is the center housing or hub rotating assembly. Okay, next. Okay, I will explain uh, more about the components in the, the turbocharger. Okay, the center housing or hub rotating assembly. It is a shaft attachment between the compressor impeller and the turbine. It's given in the center hub rotational unit. It must also have a shaft suspension bearing mechanism that allows it to spin with minimum friction at extremely high speeds. The water cool can also be considered by providing an input and outlet for the motor coolant. Water cool versions use a coolant motor to retain the colder lubricating oil, preventing the potential oil cooking from intense heat inside the turbine. Okay, the second uh, main component of turbocharger is compressor. The compressor raises the air source mass in the combustion chamber. The compressor is composed of a piston and a diffuser and also a clean box. The flow range of a turbocharged compressor can be expanded by allowing air to bleed at a point marginally downstream from a ring of holes or a circular groove across the, comp the compressor, but much closer to the inlet than to the outlet. Okay, next is the turbine itself. The gas flow is regulated by the turbine's boot, which spin up to 250,000 RPM. The size of the turbine and impeller wheel also defines the volume of air or exhaust that can flow through the system and their relative efficiency. 
the smaller the turbine wheel, the greater the flow rate and the larger the compressor wheel. Okay, next. All right. So, uh, this is barrier circle, the ideal circle for the gas and turbine. As we can see, uh, the left and right got a PV diagram and TS diagram. So, uh, which is, uh, this is a barrier circle. It's a make of four internal reversible processor. So, the first one is isotropic compression in compressor. So, the second one is constant pressure heat additional and the third one is isotropic expansion in a turbine and the fourth one is constant pressure heat rejection so uh, as you as we can see the the diagram as a pv mtc they got consists of four internal reversible process in the diagram so that is your barrier circle right Alright, so now we go to concept of open circle and closed circle gas turbine. So, as you can see also, the left and the right got open system and closed system. So, as you can see, the left uh, picture is open system that uh, consists from the uh, air, fresh air will go to compressor and then the air will after our compressor the air will go to compressor chamber the and mix the fuel and then go to the turbine and then go to exhaust gas so this is open system the gas uh, the exhaust gas leaving the turbine are throughout in atmosphere not recirculate so this is for open system but the the closed system the fresh air will go to the compressor and then go to the heat exchanger and then go to the turbine and then they will go to the heat exchanger so that, that is the closed system so the exhaust gas leaving the turbine are uh, not through out in atmosphere but he will recollect back for the air so that is a concept for open circuit open cycle and closed cycle gas turbine so next, so as you can see is also, this is turbocharger performance impact on turbocharger high speed engine. So after scientists do the research from 1996 to 2012, so they have uh, increased by level, which is the turbocharger power use is more increased at 200% and the engine power output is go to uh, 150%. And the engine fuel causes, uh, consumption is go to the low, which is 100%. That is good for our vehicle or our uh, product, which is uh, we, we, we have more safe money for the fuel consumption. And the last one is engine emission go to the low, lowest is uh, around 30%. So that's good our, for our vehicle or our product. Right, so that is uh, advantage for the turbocharger only, uh, also. So, right, so next. So next, Nur Azizi Binti Shuko will explain more about working is, uh, principle. Hi, uh, my name is Nur Aziz Binti Shukur, and so this is me. Thank you very much, Ravi. So this is me, Nur Azizi. Um, to to Sarawa, I would like to uh, apologize because I could not turn my camera on. So I guess I just have to deliver my presentation this list. Next. So this is for working principle. Um, as you can see here, this is how a turbocharged engine looks like. Okay. Um, as you can see here, a turbocharger is a small radial fan pump which driven by the energy of the exhaust gas, the exhaust gas that 
flows from here. Uh, as you can see the red arrow here. So um, technically, a turbocharger consists of a turbine and a compressor wheel here and at a shared shaft here at middle. And generally, the turbine converts exhaust, the exhaust air from the exhaust inlet um, to, rational, to rotational force, which is then uh, the force is turned to the compressor wheel. It's then driven to the compressor wheel, the blue one here. So the compressor technically draws in ambient air from the air inlet here, as you can see. And then it pumps uh, to the intake manifold at increased pressure, resulting in a greater mass of air entering the cylinders on each intake stroke. Uh, next. is the operation. As you can see here, uh, there are eight operations here. The first one is the engine's air intake sucks in cool air and sends to the compressor. The second one is the compressor compresses the incoming air and heats it up. It then blows up the hot air. And the third one is the hot air cools down when passing through the, in the heat exchanger and enters the cylinder's air intake. And then air burns inside the combustion chamber at a faster rate because of carrying more oxygen. And then due to the burning of more fuel, the energy output will be bigger and faster and the engine will be able to send more power to the wheels. The sixth one is hot waste gases will leave the chamber and blows past the turbine at the exhaust outlet. And then the turbine rotates at a high speed and spins the compressor too, as both are mounted on the same shaft. And the last one is the exhaust gases lift the car through the exhaust pipe. And technically, they waste less energy than an engine not having a turbocharger. So that's for operation. And here comes the advantages. The first one is significant increase in horsepower, which is power versus size. Um, and it allows for smaller engine displacements to produce much more power relative to their size. The second one is better fuel economy because of small engines use less fuel to idle. The third one is higher efficiency. Why so? It is because turbochargers run off energy that is typically lost in naturally aspirated and supercharged engines. Next, we have advantages. There must be disadvantages, right? So here is um, the four uh, for turbocharged engine. The first one is turbo lag. Turbo lag it is because turbochargers, especially large turbochargers take time to spool up and provide useful boost. The second one is boost threshold um, because for traditional turbochargers, they are often sized for a certain RPM range where the exhaust gas flow is adequate to provide additional boost for the engine. They typically do not operate across as wide an RPM range as superchargers. The third one is power surge. In some turbocharger applications, especially with larger turbos, reaching the boost threshold can provide an almost instantaneous surge in power, which could compromise tire traction or cause some instability of the car. The last one is oil requirement, which is turbochargers get very hot and often tap into the engine's oil supply. This calls for additional plumbing and is more demanding on the engine's Oil superchargers typically don't require engine oil lubrication. So next, I will pass to Nola Fatiha for better explanation of operating rate. Okay, next is the terms related to operating principle. Okay, the first term is pressure increase boost. 
In automotive applications, boost refers to the amount by which intake manifold pressure exceeds the atmospheric pressure. This is representative of the extra air pressure that is achieved over what will be achieved without the force induction. The second term related to operating principle is the turbocharger lag. The time required to change power output is in response to a throttle change. Notice as a hesitation or slow throttle response when accelerating as compared to a naturally aspirated engine. This is due to the time needed for the exhaust system and turbocharger to generate the required boost. And the next term is boost stress hole. The boost stress hole of a turbocharger system is the lower bound of the region within which the compressor operates. Below a certain rate of flow, a compressor produces insignificant boost. This limits boost at a particular RPM regardless of exhaust gas pressure. Newer turbocharger and engine developments have steadily reduced both threshold. Okay, next. Alright, so I'm going to explain about the application and some example of the turbocharge. Okay, uh, next. Uh, next. Okay, so the first example is the turbocharged petrol engine. engine. So, in this petrol car, I will uh, have an example of Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution X, or we call it Evo 10. So, Evo 10 was the last in this generation. Since it is the last Evo model, Japan and UK contributed to create a spectacular Evo 10. So there are two types of model which are MR and FQ, uh, which is this is the popular at that time. And both of it were created in UK. So Evo 10 MR model use a rally art engine, which is a reliable engine. This engine was used in a WRC championship. So uh, to maintain the car through the race, it uses small turbo that produce a, a horsepower around 270. However, in EVO FQ440, it uses bigger turbo that produce up to 360 horsepower factory stock. FQ440 was invented for street car. Both of it of this model only used single turbo and was made to be pushed beyond its limit. However, both still need a high end intercooler to support it. So, uh, next. Okay, next is the turbocharged diesel engine. An example of the turbo diesel engine is a Ford Ranger Raptor, which is popular in Malaysia nowadays. So, diesel engine is power type engine, which produces a lot of power, but its torque is quite low. So, to boost up its torque, turbo diesel was invented. At some time, turbo diesel was more powerful than petrol engine due to its high power and can sustain in this condition. Right, next. So this is the last example, which is an aircraft. Uh, so, uh, well, actually, turbo was invented for aircraft because at some height, the flight cannot fly anymore due to high pressure. So when uh, the flight, the flight, uh, the aircraft reach at a certain uh, height, the engine will blow. So it will cause some trouble if the aircraft fly too low. So, so uh, one of the engineer in Roy Royce invented turbo so that an aircraft can fly regardless of the obstacle and how high. So uh, that's all for me. <clears throat> Alright, so now we go to the conclusion. So, so the conclusion that uh, our team make is it's also apparent that the vehicle using the sophisticated technology has proven its reliability and strength. Hopefully, this technology will be used and updated by the recent vehicle. So that is. Then, uh, thank you.